Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. And let's get started. Six congruent circles are inscribed in a unit square as shown. Find the radius of a circle. Since they're all congruent, we're just gonna find the radius of one of the circles. All right, so this problem you may have seen before because it's not very uncommon. And I'll try to include some links uh, in the description down below. Okay, let's see. So we're gonna start by making some connections as always, right? So let's go ahead and make those connections. So what I'd like to do is, I'd like to connect these two centers here. I think that's going to be helpful. Like this, okay? And then uh, I will go ahead and drop some perpendiculars from the centers of the two circles. Like this, okay? So these are gonna be R. This is R, oopsies, just became a messy R. Uh, this is R, this is R, this is R, and this is R. Okay, but that's not the big picture, obviously. We need to make more connections. So let's go ahead and make another connection here through the centers. And of course, we're going to be taking advantage of uh, symmetry here, as always, right? Symmetry is super important. And what happens here is, okay, one thing I want you to notice is that the circles around the center, the central one, they don't always touch the central one. So notice that the, the top circle here doesn't touch the bottom one. And these two circles, like this one and this one, they don't touch each other, so on and so forth. So it's not the formation that you can, you can kind of put uh, six circles around the circle, right? Kind of like coins, but this is a little different formation. But we have the square, so that kind of gives us a restriction. Anyways, so let's make more connections here, obviously. Uh, this is this should be very natural. I'm gonna go ahead and connect these two centers like this and then like this. That's definitely gonna help, right? Because what we need is right triangles here. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And then obviously we wanna do that here as well, right? Like this and like that. Okay, so since we have symmetry, we don't really have to do it on both sides, but you know, if you want to see the big picture, you can basically connect everything. So this is also R, this is also R, and this is R, and this is R. One thing to notice here, again, is because these two circles, the top and the bottom ones, are not touching each other, this triangle here is not equilateral, but it is isosceles, which is very important, right? Okay, so I also notice that here we, we do have a, two right triangles, but the height of the right triangle is not R, it is H, let's call that H. Why do we call it H? Because it's the height. Okay, cool. Now, what about this? Well, we can go, go ahead and drop a perpendicular here as well. So, you know, draw the altitude. And what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get the same type of thing here, okay? So if you connect these two, you know, you're gonna get um, another isosceles triangle, which is pretty much the same thing as the top one, so on and so forth. Therefore, you're going to have uh, some congruent triangles here as well. So, and this triangle is super important for us because that's what's gonna help us solve the problem. So this is a right triangle, this is a right triangle, and this is another right triangle, and they're all congruent, right? Therefore, and we know that the height is going to be a median as well, so these are also H, awesome. And this is R, and this is R as well. So basically what I did was I was able to get the height uh, of the square, or you can call that side length, right? And then I'll do the same thing for the bottom, but that should be one, right? Okay, cool. So what am I gonna do? There is definitely more than one way to approach this problem, but I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Definitely you can use a different approach as well. So what am I gonna do? This is R, this is R. All right, do I know this length from this point to that point? I don't, but I can find it, how? Well, from symmetry, this needs to be the midpoint, so this is going to be one half, and if you subtract r from it, this is going to be one half minus r. There you go. So basically, you got the base of this right triangle, you know the height of this triangle, and you know the hypotenuse. Well, in terms of r and h, I mean. So we, what we can do is we can actually find h in terms of r here by using the Pythagorean theorem. That's what we're gonna do first, all right? 
And after that, we're going to do something else, which is kind of fun to do. And then we'll put it all together and then find the radius of each circle. So that's the plan. Okay, let's start by using the Pythagorean theorem. What do I have? I have 1 half minus r. I probably need to change the color here. 1 half minus r squared plus h squared is equal to 2r quantity squared. Okay, so this is the first part. So in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to find h in terms of r. That's the plan. Let's go ahead and expand this. 1 fourth minus r plus r squared plus h squared is equal to 4r squared. So from here, we, we can get an expression for h squared if we subtract everything on the left-hand side besides h, h squared from 4r squared. So let's see. 4r squared minus r squared is going to be 3r squared. Negative r plus r, right? And then I'm going to subtract 1 fourth, right? Okay. Obviously, this can be uh, simplified a little bit. At least we can make a common denominator. I don't want to deal with fractions like this. So what I'd like to do is multiply or make a common denominator. In other words, uh, 12r squared plus 4r minus 1 all over 4. Now, this is a little easier to square root. So from here, h is going to be the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. You know, that's a quotient, so it's going to look like this. Okay, that's my height in terms of r. So this is the first part. We found the height. Remember, in the problem, height is not the same as r. It's, it's greater than r, right? Uh, so we were able to find it in terms of r, which is good. Now, the second thing we're going to do, the second part, is going to be write another relationship or equation uh, that relates h and r so that you can use substitution and solve for r. Okay, how are h and r related in a different way? Well, if you consider the height of the square, which is also a side length, right? We notice that we have r here, we have h here, we have h here, we have h here, and we have r here. So they all add up to what? They all add up to 1 because this is a unit square. So let me use a darker color here. So this is R, this is H, this is H, this is H, and this is R. So the whole thing is going to be then, what? 3H plus 2R. 3H plus 2R is going to be 1. Okay? 3H plus 2R is equal to 1. So now I can proceed from here. What I need to do is replace H with what it is. And then we can basically go from here. So replace the H with that, the radical expression here. 3 times the quantity 12R squared plus, I mean the square root of that, divided by 2. This is going to be 3H plus 2R is equal to 1. So if we can solve this equation, then we can find R. Okay, but this is a quadratic. Well, it is going to be turning into a quadratic. So there will be two solutions and we'll discuss those as well. Okay, so what I'd like to do first is, you know, all the time I, I want to do this type of thing. Multiply both sides by 2 so you can clear the fractions. Okay, just makes it easier. So multiply everything by 2 and don't forget. Okay, here we go. Now the next step is going to involve getting rid of the radical. So we're going to isolate that on the left hand side and what we're going to do next is to get rid of the radical we're going to square both sides all right that's what we're going to do next let's go ahead and square both sides but remember when you square both sides then you get some extraneous solutions which we're going to check at the end so when we square this this is a product so it's going to be 9 times 12 r squared plus 4 r minus 1 and then the right hand side is going to be a minus b squared, which is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which is 4 minus 16r plus 16r squared. Okay? Awesome. Let's go ahead and distribute here. We get 108r squared plus 36r minus 9 is equal to 4 minus 16r plus 16r squared. If you go ahead and subtract everything uh, from the left hand side, 108 minus 16 is going to be. 92, 92 R squared, and then 36 R plus 16 R, that's going to give us 52 R. Negative 9 minus 4 is going to give you negative 13. Okay? 
Here we go. This is our equation for R, and you will hopefully remember, because I mentioned this a few times and I've also done a separate video on Vieta's formulas, I said that you can find the product of the roots and the sum of the roots in a quadratic equation without solving the equation. So what we know is that the product is negative because it's C over A, therefore, so in other words, this is what I'm trying to say, R1 times R2 is equal to negative 13 over 92, which is less than zero. And this indicates that one of the solutions is negative, but we don't want that. So we're gonna focus on the positive solution. Here we go. R is equal to negative B plus, not plus minus, the square root of B squared. So in this case, what I need to do is I need to square this unfortunately, but don't worry, we're gonna simplify this B squared minus four times A times C. Since C is negative, I can just go ahead and change this sign and here we go. Now, what's really cool about this is that we can simplify this because, and two times 92 is gonna be 184, okay. We can simplify this because we have common factors. Well, 52 is definitely a common factor because four times 13 is 52, so I can definitely factor that out. And definitely it's going to help us. Okay, let's see how this goes. So what I can do here is I can just go ahead and factor out a 52. And that should give me 52 times the quantity, 52 plus 92, because what I have here is four times 13 times 92. And that's kind of nice. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and simplify this further. Obviously 52 is not a perfect square, so we're not gonna be able to take it out. But here's the good news. 52 plus 92 is equal to 144. Isn't that beautiful? Because it is 12 squared. So what I can do is I can take that out. But not only that, because I also have 52 contains a four. So basically this expression can be written as four times 13 times 144. And when I square root this, I'll get two times 12, which is equal to 24. Awesome. So I'm getting this one then. Negative 52 plus two times 12, which is 24 times the square root of, what, what do I have inside? 13 only, awesome. Okay, great. You see, we didn't have to calculate these large numbers. Divide by 184. Obviously, this can be simplified because everything here is divisible by four. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and divide everything by four and just arrange this a little bit so that the radical goes first so we don't start with a negative term. You know, start your day on a positive note, so on and so forth. And to keep a long story short, and I kind of kept it long, I'm sorry about that, six root 13 minus 13 all over 46 and 46 is 184 divided by four. All right, so that basically brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow at the same time. Take care, bye-bye.